this topic is covered in a number of books, and just as a, as a warning, um, if you have Understanding Structures by Seward, um, they use a different method than what we do within this module. You can review that method, however, um, don't um, follow it um, for answering any questions in terms of your tutorials or assessments. So that's Understanding Structures by Seward, don't use that. If you've got the Dirk, Dirk Structural Mechanics book, um, there's very little in terms of description about the topic itself, but it's got some good examples in there, so that's a, a useful book to, to look at. And then there's a, a final a book in the library called Hultz and Kane. That has a um, particularly good chapter on this topic. If you want to, um, to understand the, the theory So from today, we should be able to look at the importance um, of beam deflection. You'll be able to use some of the formula to calculate deflection. And really it's, it's about when we apply a load, just like in the video, you've got those, those beams being um, loaded to ultimate limit state. So there's two things that you need to design something for, ultimate limit state that's where we're concerned with the beam failing and, uh, and cracking and shear or bending. The whole thing collapses. That's the ultimate limit state. And then you've got serviceability limit state. That's the second thing that you need to consider. And that's all about how much it deflects, how much it cracks. So the appearance of the, um, the beam itself. And you'll find that when you have to do checks on beams or, or any component, that there is, you need to consider both of those, the ultimate limit state the f and, and the, um, the serviceability limit state. So we've always done a focus, well, we've always had a focus on, on strength or the, the, the stress in the material. And, um, You know, I've got like a question here, why was it necessary to calculate the ver <coughs> vertical de deflections? And again, it, it's mostly just the, the fear that people, people have when they, um, when they see what's happening above them or below them. What you'll find that depending on the type of material that you use, timber, concrete, steel, that you have a number of formula that you apply to try and find your allowable deflection. Deflection is usually represented by this symbol here. Um, um, is there, I'm not aware of any other um, symbols that they, they use for um, deflection. Um, and if you wanted to try and work, work out um, what the, the allowable would be. So you've got allowable and you'll compare that to the, um, the, the actual. For the actual, we'll have a number of formula. For the allowable within different codes, you have um, like a simple, simple formula. It'll, it'll say that the allowable can be like 1 in 360. So if you have a span and you multiply it by 0 0.003, that's like just like 1 over 360, that could be, um, that's, that's usually the, the standard um, deflection for what people can accept. You might come to a... Um, a a restriction on the allowable deflection depending on the type of material that you have. So if you have a plaster, which is very brittle, so when, the, when there's some deflection, it might crack, you'll find that there may be a deflection limit um, of one in 200. So that's where you'd be 0.005 times by the span. So that would give you the allowable. 
and then you compare that to um, the actual using the formula. So I've got like a, li a little example here. So if you've got a timber beam and it spans four meters and our deflection limit is one in 360, then what we do, we turn our meters into millimeters. So we've got 4,000 multiplied by 0 0.003 and that gives us the allowable deflection. That gives us um, 12, 12 millimetres for a 1360. <coughs> I don't know if that feels a lot um, to people. I guess, you know, there is the appearance of it, but also if, if you did have a, have a floor and you had a, like a, a lot of snooker tables um, on, the, on, the, on the floor itself, you know, you'd have to like sort of make sure that you twist all of the legs to make sure that everything is flat. You find that when um, there's a tolerance for designing floors from, from, from one end of the room to the other side of the room, you're allowed to be out by about 25 millimetres in terms of the... The, the laying of the concrete or laying of the screed, but that doesn't take account of the deflection that, that it has. So that's look, looking at the allowable. Now we've looked at, when we've looked at beams, we've looked at the shear force to try and find the maximum bending moment. And then we find that where bending moment equals zero, you've got your point of, uh, you've got your, your contraflexure and you can find out where your, um, your beam is moving from. Like if we had a beam here, so it's a beam that spans over four, <coughs> four points and there's a load being applied there and a load being applied here. So this is typically the shape that it could take. The question would be like, where, where are you going to get your largest deflection? And next year, when you start looking at loading and individual um, uh, materials like concrete or steel, you find that you've got um, unfavorable loads and favorable loads. Like most loads are bad, they're unfavorable. So if we, if we have two, two loads, on here and, um, and it's creating this this deflective shape what we could do we could put another load on the top there which would push down our deflection so even though you're applying another load that would be classed as a favorable load or if we put a load on here that would bring that deflection down slightly and also lift this section up so you find that when you come to apply factors of safety you apply the larger factors to the unfavorable loads, they're the main loads that are being applied to a floor. But you've got, you know, in terms of like a couple of choices, if you find that the deflection is too great, you could either add more material into the beam, but would you ever think of adding another load onto the actual beam itself to reduce the deflection? Well, that's a, a way of um, um, it, tackling the, the deflection problem. So if we've got three example shapes here, what are the likely deflected shapes? It's obvious. This one is like a diving board. And it's easy to see where the maximum, like with, with designing beams, we always want to know what is the maximum shear, the maximum bending moment, and the maximum deflection. That's, that's what you, um, that you need, so it doesn't really matter what the deflection is at, at any particular point. However, you will find that this formula that you can use to, to find the, the deflection at any particular point and the slope of the beam at, at a particular point also. So our diving board, if you've got some stood on the end, our deflection is obviously going to be, the largest deflection is going to be at the end. This would be um, a more difficult one to try and figure out uh, which would be the largest 
like whether it's this point or this point here. But again, you know, to try and reduce these, you know, you could apply a load underneath to either lift them up to reduce the deflection itself. Now, when we've looked at deflection, um, and, and, to and, and talked about beams in the past. If we've got a material that has a, a, a different A value, so if you've got a steel with a very, very strong A value compared to like a timber, the larger the A value, the stiffer the material is, and also the shape of the material. Now, when we've looked at our second moment of area, looking at our I values, like if we had a rule and we were bending it, we would say that it would, it would bend easier in this um, compared to here. Now that's, and now you have formula, you know, you've got your V times by D cubed over 12. So what we're finding out is that when, we're, when we've got larger values of, of A and I, you'll find that you have it a stiffer material and it'll make sure um, deflection. Um, so this actual, what you'll find is that we have, we have a formula, but we'll be multiplying it by sort of one over E and I. So the larger that these are, the smaller the deflection is. So it, it, it makes sense if you have a larger E steel, it's going to be greater than timber, so therefore it's, it's going to have a smaller deflection. And then if you have a, a larger um, second moment of area, so stiffness based upon shape, then again, you'll be um, having a smaller deflection. You could work out, in terms of answering this question, you could work out which has got the, the largest I value. Uh, you'd have to try and sort of figure out using the calcs whether it was is this one B or C. So this one you would just use your BD cubed over 12. That one there you'd have to use the parallel parallelogram um, parallel axis theorem. Yep. And yet if you had the same shape if it was um, sort of s s steel or timber, obviously the, um, the timber's going to deflect the most. Can you think of any other factors that influence the deflection? So we've got our A value, our I value. Length. Yep, we've got our span length. And you've got the loads, the larger load, the more the deflection is. Like this is like a typical um, wordy question that you could have um, in, in an exam, you know, describe the factors that influence deflection. So you've got your A, your I, your span, you've got your, um, your, um, your the load itself. So I believe in your notes, just remind myself where, what you've got. Yep, you've got the front slide and then you've got this table here. Now this table is a summary of, of some of the tables at the back of your book. Like, um, if you just go in one page, then we've got all of the, the, the different types of beams with the shear force, bending moment, and then you'll see that we've got deflection, where you can work out the deflection at a particular point, or, or the maximum deflection. And depending on your scenario, so if we have a cantilever with a concentrated load at the end, then if we wanted to try and work out what the slope of the, the beam was at the end, then we would apply this formula. So we've got our load times by the span squared over 2EI. Now this gives you the answer in radians, 
Okay, so just double check um, what, you're, um, what you're working with with your calculator. We mostly use degrees but it, uh, within this module, but for here, um, it, it uses radians. Or if you've got um, a cantilever with a UDL across it, then there's a slightly different um, formula. So we've got our small w, which represents UDL. Remember, our large w is um, a total load. So our w, if we have a if we have a beam, our W would be in kilonewtons. So if that was five meters, and that was ten kilonewtons per meter, our W would be fifty kilonewtons, and. The UDL is that's the ten kilonewtons per meter. So this is why, in terms of our UDL, we got kilonewtons per meter. Our total load it's it's in kilonewtons. So you've got to get a little formula there. You've got small W is large W over the span, and it's important uh, for this particular week because you'll find that you you'll have some textbooks that will work with um, capital W's and small W's for the UD UDL and you've got to make sure that you've got the, got the right one. And depending upon the, the loading condition, so we've got cantilevers, and then we've got a simply supported beam, so it's a bit like that one there, with the, so if we, if we had a simply supported beam with a UDL across the span, if you wanted to work out what the, the maximum slope was, we have a formula here to go through. And then if you wanted to work out the deflection at a particular point Y, oh sorry, um, if, if, at a point X, so X along, it will give you our deflection uh, Y. Yeah, so um, deflection, so far we've got Y just because of the, um, the vertical direction my brain's gone dead. Sigma. What we got? Delta. 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 Yes. Brain's <coughs> gone dead. So you got delta or y for. Uh, I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any other that I've that I've come across. And you're also given a formula for the maximum deflection. Now, this is what you mostly use, the maximum deflection. And we'll go through a couple of ex examples just to show how we can uh, apply these. So this is the, the total table that you have on your sort of, your, the bottom of your slide. So again, all you've got to try and remember is make sure it's angle um, in radians. Like I've given you, you know, you've probably done this in maths. Your radians, 2 pi radians is 360 degrees, so you've got a simple formula for jumping in between degrees and radians. And then you've got a couple of little sort of images that show the different scenarios if you don't know what a cantilever simply supported beam is. So on the, if, if you go to the back of your books, this is the a typical exam handout that you get. You don't have to remember all of these deflection formula. So if you find a simply supported beam with a UDL all the way along the top. Now zooming in just on, on the simply supported beam, you can see that we've got a capital W so we know that this formula here is working with the total load, not the, um, not the UDL load. So we've got, if you wanted to quickly find out what the maximum moment is at the middle, we've got WL over 8. If you wanted to work out what the maximum shear is, 
it'd be at the reactions. So it would be taking our W divided by two. And then if we wanted to try and work out our deflection, we've got five over 384 times by capital W, L cubed over AI. However, if you compare that to some other books, you find that you have the same formula. So this is the, um, this is the one that we were working with. So we've got our deflection down here is 384 times by our W L cubed over AI. In some books, you might have the deflection is five times by our UDL. So that's kilonewtons per metre. So we, that's why we've got times by L to the four. So the most common mistake is that people would use the incorrect W. So we've got L cubed and L to the four. So you just gotta make sure that you use the correct one. You can use something called the, um, the, the principle of super, perfect, super position for, um, for doing a rough estimate. You were asked to look at that within the, the Cal Group software in one, of the, in one of the weeks. It's not part of the assessment, but this is where you can start. If, if you had a scenario where you have a, a UDL of 10 kilonewtons and you also have a point load Like one, you could try and sort of see if there is a loading scenario that matches what you have. But if not, then what you can do, you can take the deflection for the UDL, which is our 5WL cubed over 384EI. So you could take that deflection for the UDL. And then you can add it and find the table where you've just got a point load. And then you can find out what the deflection is just for the point load. And that's a conservative way of working out what the, the deflection, it's going to be larger than what it actually is. Um, you can do exactly the same when you're adding together the shear force and the, and the, um, and the bending moment, the, the principle of superposition. So if you go through this in Cal Group, you'll see that you know, for a UDL, your, your shear force would be something like that for the UDL. And then the shear force for the, the point load, it would go up, along until you come to this point, and then it would come down, and then along. And then what you can do is you can add both of the shapes together, and, um, and then take the, the max, add both of these um, together, and get the maximum. So that's the principle of superposition. So have a look at that in, in your own time. That's in Cal Group. It's a very useful um, piece of software. Did anyone look at principle of superposition slightly in the week that we were supposed to look at it? No. Look through the learning materials in Blackboard. You've got week one all the way down through. It's usually one of the IT sessions that we have, one of the earlier sessions. And, um, and there, are, there are a couple of um, like workbooks that you can work through um, to try and improve your knowledge of beams, shear force bending, and that principle. So let's, let's go through an example. And you have this example here in your notes. 